Welcome, everyone, to Mayo Clinic Q&A. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. A biopsy means that some cells, some tissue, or maybe some fluids are removed from the body to make a diagnosis. And the removed sample is usually looked at under a microscope by a pathologist. Now, the pathologists are looking at multiple sections, multiple samples. You know, it's really tedious, time-consuming work. But advances in machine learning are helping pathologists look at more specimens faster and more accurately, at least when it comes to biopsies from the kidney. And here to tell us more about that process is Mayo Clinic pathologist Dr. Priya Priya Alexander and Mayo Clinic statistician Dr. Byron Smith. Welcome to the program, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. A pathologist and a numbers guy. So tell us first uh, what it is your your role at the Mayo Clinic as a pathologist, and you are called an anatomic pathologist. Tell us what that means. So an anatomic pathologist is somebody who looks at tissue macroscopically. That's the gross specimen. We look at it under the microscope, so microscopically. And then we can do additional tests. We can do immunological tests, um, biochemical tests, molecular tests to arrive at a diagnosis. And sometimes you do special stains. It takes a while to get the answer back, I remember. Yes. You can do all kinds of special stains that help you illustrate special features in the biopsy better. Are you and pretty good at it? I mean, uh, are, are you? I hope are so. the diagnoses pretty accurate? Diagnoses by pathologists are pretty accurate. Uh, it's when you have to do a lot of quantitative studies and large number of data, then there are questions on, you know, reproducibility, especially when you have quantitative data that, and semi-quantitative data. That's when there's variability with pathologists. And is that why the numbers guy is here? Absolutely. So, Dr. Smith, tell us about what you do. Statistician, how do, and how do you get involved with Dr. Alexander? Yeah, so uh, here I am a... Um, I kind of focus on kidney transplant. Uh, so kidney transplant, uh, fortunately, the outcome of the transplant is actually pretty good, but that means that we really have to look at larger trends, which is why I work on it. So we are trying to figure out how can we extend the life of kidney transplants through statistical models. And what we found was actually pathology and the results that pathologists come up with uh, is a significant predictor of um, outcome so in other words, patients. if you take a biopsy of a transplanted kidney and Dr. Alexander looks at it, and then you can change, put some numbers to that and help determine how long the kidney is going to survive? Absolutely. We can take their diagnosis or scores from that um, biopsy. We can put them into mathematical models and predict whether or not a patient will have a graft that survives longer or shorter. And yeah. it's the kidney that brought the two of you together. <laughs> yes, that's yes. correct. Why did you, did you have a special interest in the kidney, Dr. Alexander? Yeah, I think uh, ever since medical school, I fell in love with kidney. The pathophysiology of the uh, non-tumor kidney for me is very fascinating. Huh. Of Plus course there's had... two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we I, hope. <laughs> I, 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 we want to talk about uh, the, this study that was done. It was called Deep Learning Based Histopathologic Assessment of kidney tissue. So tell us a little bit about that. Put that into lay terms for us. So histopathology, as I said, is looking at the kidney tissue under the microscope. And we're looking at unique structures in the kidney, such as the glomeruli, tubules, and interstitium, and blood vessels. That's fancy stuff that's in number, names for stuff inside the kidney. That's exactly. That's stuff in the kidney that helps you make urine. And it has to work uh, for somebody to be healthy. And we as renal pathologists look renal at this. Renal meaning kidney. Kidney pathologists. We look at the different structures and look at them together uh, with special stains, immunofluorescence, electron microscopy, and we can come up with a diagnosis as to what is wrong with this kidney. And in the transplant, there are several systems that we use to analyze these kidneys to come up with more objective reports that help uh, talk about how the kidney is, uh, you know, how to predict different outcomes in the kidney, what is going on with this kidney. Is there rejection? Is there recurrent disease? These are the things that we're looking at. So that's the deep learning part of it? No, so this is the histopathology. Okay. And, uh, to we make... haven't even gotten to that yet. Well, we the deep started. learning uh, comes first in the title, so <laughs> <laughs> what does that part mean? Yeah. Uh, so deep learning, uh, I think some of the terms like AI and machine learning have become a little bit nebulous. Everyone uses them slightly differently. Um, deep learning uh, specifically refers to the application of what are called neural networks. 
And here the idea is that in a standard statistical model, we might model some sort of outcome with predictors. Uh, but here in the neural network, we apply a model to a model to a model to a model in layers, and that makes it deep. Hmm. For the layperson here at this table, I'm just going to say the reason why that this is important for kidney health, for kidney transplants, is it used to be you would just do a blood type or a tissue type and then let's do this transplant. But what you're doing helps, does it make more successful transplants um, matches to begin with? Well, so when we interpret renal pathology, we use um, a very nice standardized score, and one of the scores is the BAMF system. And in that, there are a lot of um, unique features in a renal transplant biopsy. For example, how much of interstitial fibrosis is there? How much tubular atrophy is there? How much vascular disease is there? How much of um, changes in the glomeruli are there? That and these are scored semi-quantitatively. And those actually are very useful when we put them in predictive models mm -hmm. to help you predict how the graft is doing. But what we have found, and this is unique not just to renal pathology, but to all pathology, is that when you are dealing with semi-quantitative data, it's tedious, it's repetitive, and you can make errors. And it's not just in kidney pathology and breast pathology when you're looking for tumors. This is where human error in reproducibility is well known. And that is where applying machine learning can really help reduce errors. For example, just counting glomeruli. One would think that's simple enough, and it's not complicated. But the human has what is called a visual spatial um, memory, and that is where we can make errors in simple things like counting. So if a machine can do that well, and if a machine can tell you how much interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy is, it is more accurate and more reproducible, we have found in different studies that we have done, to actually predict outcome better. And so, so what that's, does this machine look like? You're talking about a machine that's helping you. So from the pathologist's perspective, the slide, which is the glass slide, is mm -hmm. now scanned with different um, there are several scanners that are available, Aperio and Philips scanners, and you get what's called a whole slide image. And then you identify the pathologist or a morphometrician, that's somebody who's skilled in identifying these unique structures, identifies different components in that kidney biopsy. And then we move on to the machine. Yeah, so what we have to use is something called a graphical processing unit. It's a special kind of hardware that will allow us to process the images faster. Um, so once we take these images, the images actually happen to be huge. So they will be something like 100 megabytes to a gigabyte. So if you have several images, you'll have several terabytes. So it takes a lot of hardware to even store the images, let alone process the images. But once we start processing, what we will do is you use this neural network and it will go through the image looking for specific characteristics of different tissue types. So for example, vessels or glomeruli, they might have different borders or might have different shapes. And once it figures out those shapes, it can classify the pixels in the image as belonging to a glomerulus or belonging to a tubule, something like that. And so in doing this, it segments out each object within the biopsy and it will automatically calculate things like areas, densities, hmm. and shapes of all of those objects. So uh, instead of having a pathologist kind of guess at some of these things, you can immediately know whether or not uh, your glomeruli are larger than they're supposed to be or something, another change is happening. So your machine can do what Dr. Alexander can do only faster and better in some instances. Not for making the diagnosis, but for counting glomeruli and fibrotic tubules or quantitative and semi-quantitative data it certainly is going to be more accurate and yes. is this going to become more common as, as time goes on i mean with the the ultimately uh pathologists rely more and more on machine learning and ai to make a diagnosis and to do things like studies like you're talking about well, I think we certainly are moving into the era of digital pathology and uh, machine learning, and our Mayo Clinic pathology is a global leader, and we um, have an enterprise team with uh, Dr. 
Bill Maurice, who is the chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology, and Scott Beck, and they are spearheading this movement. And they have actually got uh, funding from the Mayo Clinic leadership to invest in digital pathology and artificial intelligence. And they have actually now partnered with Sectra and MedSystems. And it's going to be a big deal starting from 2020. You can expect to see a lot of applications of digital pathology and in the near future, AI. So I also wanted to give a little special thanks to uh, Dr. Stiegel and the Stiegel Lab as a group for funding this and putting so much effort towards scanning the slides and developing code in order to create these models. And also to our international collaborators in Radboud, uh, who have is that the Netherlands? That is the Netherlands, <laughs> who ultimately put the model together so that, or at least this initial model, so that we could then validate the model on our biopsy slides and move forward with new and better models. Terrific. All right, artificial intelligence, digital learning. I mean, it's all changing the world, and it's helping pathologists interpret kidney biopsies faster and more accurately. But no question, the world is changing. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic pathologist, Dr. Priya Alexander, and statistician, Dr. Byron Smith. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you.